Moving on, the next take says Megumi is better than Gojo. Wait, 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 wait. Better than Gojo. Time it says Itadori is currently the best shonen MC in Jump. Yeah, I don't know about that one. And it says 20 Finger Sukuna probably beats Gojo. Yeah, we're gonna have to get into this one. What's going on YouTube? It's basically anime and another day, another video. And um, as you probably know by now, I haven't posted in over a year now. And yeah, that's an L in my books. Yeah, so I'm really sorry about that. I just had a lot of stuff going on and I always made it my end goal to return, but I just didn't. But during this break, I ended up binging a lot of anime and manga and just finding my love for it again that I somehow lost. Because if you're gonna do something like YouTube, might as well be something you're actually passionate about. But forget all that because it's 2022, when you're the start of 2022, and I'm back and better than ever. Also like to give a huge thanks to y'all for 1,000 subscribers, which for some reason I never got to do. But yeah, it's only the beginning, and hopefully there'll be more to come. Before my comeback video, I decided to go with a video on one of my personal favorites, and by far, easily one of the best new gen out there right now, Jujutsu Kaisen. Now, as of now, I'm currently caught up with season one, along with its manga and its recent arc, and I think it's safe to say, based on what I've seen. Jujutsu Kaisen is just built different, so in my one year time skip arc, I honestly was out of content ideas, so I figured, why don't I just react to other people's thoughts on such a great series? So a few months ago, I decided to add some subscribers to JJK Discord server and also my Twitter at BasicallyNMA for the best Jujutsu Kaisen tanks they had, and I'm not gonna lie, some of the responses I got were certainly interesting, but also facts at the same time. So in today's video, I'll be reacting and going in depth a little into these hot takes, and probably determining if they're valid or not. Anyway, before we get into the video, make sure to subscribe to the channel for more new Sukai's and content. Turn on post notifications so you never miss a bang of an upload. And most importantly, make sure to drop your hottest or mid to educate takes in the comments because, you know, I would love to do another video where I get to engage with y'all like this. Anyway, let's get into the takes. Okay, so I'm going to be pulling the first takes from Twitter, you know, at BaseGlanMe, got up my plugin, and they're actually looking pretty heat. So, we got one on Jogo. If you don't know who Jogo is, he was that cursed spirit villain who was prevalent early on in the series, he had Volcano Head and everything, if you didn't know his name. And it says Jogo would take out every other special curse in a 1v1. I don't know if Sukuna counts, if so, then obviously not Sukuna. Okay, I was about to say, because... Last we saw Jogo, wasn't he in a fight with Sukuna back in Shibuya like over maybe two years ago now? Sukuna had beat Jogo so bad that last I remember, didn't Jogo like end up in a curse spirit heaven realm or whatever that was? And I was actually reading the fight the other day, believe it or not, and Sukuna had practically wiped this dude from existence because I didn't even know he was dead at the time and I still didn't even realize he was dead till I looked back on it. And I'm pretty sure there was a line or panel where he didn't even realize he was dead. But yeah, all jokes aside, and you know, I'm actually about to spit some facts on y'all. In my opinion, Jogo remains one of Jujutsu Kaisen's most underrated characters when it comes to both power and even character rights if you take a closer look. You know, I feel like people really don't give Jogo the props he deserves, even as a villain, regardless of a character. Even though the man is literally top 10 strongest characters in Jujutsu Kaisen if you take a closer look, but you know, like number 8 or 9, I'm not going to overestimate him. And I mean, yeah, in anime, yes, he did get embarrassed by Gojo as a teaching lesson. And in the manga, he did then get embarrassed by Sukuna. But at the end of the day, Mans was literally facing the two strongest characters in the series and actually managed to contend with both of them. And now that I think about it, can't we make the argument that he was the strongest actual real cursed spirit? Because like the take said, Sukuna doesn't really count. But yeah, back to the take about Jogo, what was it? 1v1 wanting the special grade curses. And from what I can tell from reading like Shibuya three times over, I'd say it's pretty valid and a 10 out of 10 take I'd probably make myself. I mean, Jogo's volcano and those flames pretty much already eviscerate 90% of the series. It's just that Gojo was the exception because he's Gojo. And we already saw how strong those flames were when they literally packed up Nanami, Maki, and um, Nabito in seconds. And when you add his domain that we saw in his fight against Gojo, which I'm pretty sure was stated to burn everyone inside of it, the other special grades such as Mahito, Dagon, 
and um, Hanami are already done for. It's literally immense fire versus plants, water, and regeneration, and soul manipulation. So yeah, that's a valid take. Next take we got is one on JJK's power system, and it says JJK's power system is all complicated and doesn't explain everything well, like cursed techniques and cursed energy, black flash, cursed weapons, and its rankings, etc. Okay, so Gacha Kuruto, the person who made this take, I honestly would say you're mixing up complicated with complex, because I'm not gonna lie, if we're being honest, JJK probably does have one of the most complex power systems and just you know what a complex plot in general i've ever seen especially when it comes to his curse techniques bruh what is that i mean it's like gegar katami the creator of jjk by the way has like you know one of those random word generators that put two words together when creating these techniques like with my man toto maybe he got like words dance switch or something like that that transferred into what toto has for a technique now but yeah for sure there are some techniques that do go off the deep end of complex like projection sorcery from Nayoa and Nabita Zenin. No matter how much times I read the description, I still can't get it. Or Kento Nanami with his racial technique or I heard he has a binding vow that gives him extra power when he's on overtime. So yeah, you know, there's obviously basis to this take because there are certainly power aspects of the series that are more complex than others like curse techniques, binding vows, and like you mentioned about the cursed weapons. But overall, I feel like cursed energy for the most part is pretty straightforward if you just don't overanalyze it. It's just power that comes from emotions. But there is one thing I always wanted Gage to explain or at least touch up on. Why do some people tend to have more cursed energy than others? Because that stuff completely boggles me. Because they really haven't given a definitive explanation on how one gets such a high amount of cursed energy if you're not a part of the main clans. I'm not talking about Megumi or that blood clan dude. I'm talking about people like Nabara, Toto, or even Nanami. Because last time I checked, they weren't a part of any major clans and they had decent amounts of cursed energy. Nanami had a lot. But yeah, that stuff, you know, help us out. Yeah, so I'm using my brain more than I should on this take. Overall, there are normal, complex, and complicated aspects to JGK's power system, and we just gotta accept it for how it is. And when I say this take was pretty mid, you know, between valid and unvalid for sure. Moving on, we got a light take on my man Megumi, you know, the coolest and probably my top character behind Gojo, Toji, and maybe Yuta and Yuji. And it says if all you have to say about Megumi is that he's edgy, you need to stop talking about JJK. Um, I guess this is more of a mini rant than a take, but Megumi is going to be my boy forever, so this is automatically a valid take. But on the topic of Megumi and his character, I'm not going to lie, there was a time where I had finished catching up to JJK, and I honestly couldn't characterize Megumi if my life depended on it. And this was around the time I finished Shibuya. Megumi was just one of those characters who were like super cool, but not much else. And I mean, yeah, he's actually one of my favorite characters and probably one of your favorite characters if you're not lying to yourself. And you know, it's just because he gives that vibe. You guys know that vibe where he's just that guy. And you know, he's just so dangerously cool. And I think we all know where he got it from. Because there was no other anime character who could make getting beat up look so cool. Like in the anime, when he got beat up by Toto and Sukuna. The dude was still looking cool and just clean while doing it. I don't know, those anime scenes were just heat for me and Megumi just did what he had to do. And the thing is, with all that, I wish they would give the dude some kind of moment like similar to Yuji and Shibuya where we really got to see some real emotion and some real character. Now don't get me wrong, just because I'm bringing up Shibuya Yuji, I'm not trying to see my man have a mental breakdown like Yuji, but you know, a little tears in an emotional moment or an actual smile would go a long way for his character in general. For the next take, we got a character take and it's a character take on Mahito. You know why I actually call him the number one menace of JJK society, if not the number one menace of new gen anime in general? But yeah, it says Mahito is a high A or even S tier antagonist. Oh, oh for sure, for sure. There is absolutely no doubt in my mind that Mahito is, and you know what I'm gonna say, cause I know there's some people out there who don't really wanna go this far, but he is no cap. 
one of the best new gen antagonists of all time. I mean, especially after what Mahito did in the Shibuya arc, A and S tiers are the only tiers for him, there's no going below that. I mean, the Yuji Mahito dynamic is absolutely amazing. And Every time the two of them were together, even though they were only together for like two times, you knew it was about to go down. They just carried so much hype and animosity between them, and it was honestly awe dropping. And the hands they both got were absolutely beautiful. And the thing is, the reason why he's just so much more impactful, especially in the new gen era of Shonen, because if he was in an old gen series, for example, like Naruto, Naruto Shippuden. The dude's probably gonna be seen just like that Hidon dude from Akatsuki. And last time I checked, Hidon didn't get any respect. That's tough! But with Mahito, it's just that he doesn't care about anything that stood in his way, but at the same time, literally dedicated everything he had toward his goal. I mean, he was out here ending main characters' lives that I actually liked, and it was like, oh well, on to the next. And I'm not gonna lie, I was actually scared of him at one point. But yeah, back to the original take, and for sure, without a doubt, Mahito is a a top A antagonist, like very top or peak of A. You know, at best bottom of S. You know, I just don't see him being anything like mid S or high S, cause that's just not how I see him. And it's mainly because how his character ended in Shibuya. That's just one thing I hated, but still was satisfied with at the same time. You know, I'm not trying to spoil anything too big, but. Let's just say they have my man literally running for his life. But yeah, I could honestly go on and on about Mahito for a while just because of the great writing there is behind this character. But for the sake of the video, we're going to cut it off here and conclude. Mahito, no matter what happened at Shibuya, is a high A antagonist, but still an S-class menace, and therefore, the take was valid. Okay, so I'm pretty sure I left the best and maybe most controversial takes, I guess you could say, for the last of the Twitter takes. And it's probably one of the most debated topics in Jujutsu Kaisen, especially when Shibuya was still happening when it comes down to who comes out as the strongest character, you know, besides my man Toji, obviously. Okay, so the take comes from the user Heavy, and it says 20 Finger Sukuna probably beats Gojo. Yeah, we're gonna have to get into this one. So ever since I found out this was a debate because I honestly just assumed Gojo would win like hands down because he's Gojo, you know. But after Shibuya, where we actually get to see Sukuna showcase some of that power he's been hyped up about since chapter one, I honestly went from Gojo winning hands down to, I don't know about this one. So <laughs> And you gotta remember, Shibuya Sukuna wasn't even at 20 fingers at the time. But I did end up doing some research a few weeks ago, and as a part-time Gojo fanboy, I gotta say it, he might actually lose this one. Now of course, when this fight happens, this is probably gonna be one of the best fights we're gonna see from Jutsu Kaisen ever, and it also has to be the closest, because while I do see Sukuna coming out on top, Gojo will forever be the strongest Jujutsu sorcerer alive and won't let anyone just completely dominate him. But yeah, Sukuna possibly winning does actually make sense if you if you really think about it. Because what was the point of Gojo absolutely destroying Sukuna in the beginning of the series, like what episode one, and them having him say he could still be Sukuna at 20 fingers? If you're not trying to set up a Sukuna victory against Gojo in the future, like you know what I mean? I'm just it just makes more sense to see Sukuna beat Gojo. Remember, in a close fight, than seeing Gojo, who said he would win, just at the end of the day win. Also shout out to the Broken Ronin for the strongest domain expansion video because after watching that, I'm not gonna lie, it kinda opened my eyes to this subject because I kinda realized that when it comes to a battle of just physical attacks, the two are practically equal as while Sukuna can't really touch Gojo, obviously because of Infinity, Sukuna, I think he should still be able to dodge Gojo's attacks and can also regenerate so it really just comes down to the domain expansions. And on one side you have Gojo who can create a void of space and anyone who's in it would end up like this. I can see everything. And then on the other side you have Sukuna, whose domain expansions was already stated to be different from the other domain extensions from the get-go, which does include Gojo's. Because I'm pretty sure they explain it like instead of creating a separate space like all the other domain expansions does. Sukuna can literally make reality itself his domain and anyone in said reality is like dead. I mean there's really no other way to put it than this. If Gojo manages to lose to Sukuna in a battle of domain expansions, which is obviously going to be an amazing fight, there's a good chance that Gojo might actually get himself, you know, killed or 
Okay, never mind. It's Gojo, or at least hurt so bad that plot armor would have to save him. And you know what the thing is, even if anything I said doesn't work, we still don't know or know for sure what Sukuna's curse technique is. For all we know, Gege could bring some anti-Gojo hack we've never seen. I mean, you know how much Gege loves his hacks, but you know, I think we'll leave it there for now. So yeah, this take is probably a take I'd make myself on a good day, and it's looking valid, but I guess we'll all just have to wait and see until the big fight, which I'm hoping is soon, Gojo vs Sukuna round 2, Cullen Games, fight. But yeah, it looks like that's it for the Twitter takes. Thanks to everyone who replied with their takes. And yeah, make sure to follow. So on to the subscriber hot takes. And um, we only got one take because I guess y'all don't. I mean, we got two takes technically. But, you know, I'm pretty sure the second one is a troll because the guy commented about UG being, you know, a generic and. Oh, hell no. Which is like a normal talking point for JJK haters. And in my opinion, when I hear that. My automatic response is because it's not my first time saying that, read the manga. It means you have not read the manga or you're just like a hands down JJK hater. But yeah, the take is not valid obviously. And if you feel the same way, I highly recommend that you read the manga because Shibuya Yuji will surprise you for sure. But back to the one take, only one take. I mean, we're getting back on YouTube after like a one year time skip arc. So it's going to take some time before you run the numbers up again. But anyway, thanks for the take. It comes from Kobito's AMB and it says Shibuya was a 7 slash 8 out of 10. Ooh, a 7 slash 8 out of 10? You know, I never really fully sat down and rated Shibuya before. I was always one of those talented hype mans you would see on Twitter, but now that I really think about it, Shibuya was like a solid 9.5, which is to me like extremely great or like the peak of greatness, right under like Masterpiece or something around that level. But a 7 or 8? Specifically, the 7 is like average or a playing good to me and Shibuya from start to finish was nowhere near seven not even close and the thing is none of them really thinking about it I'm gonna be honest I can't really find anything that was bad or just plain terrible in Shibuya because I mean there's a reason why me and a lot of other people call it a new gen masterpiece I mean of course like with any other shonen arc there was like those little moments here and there where I was like bro what is going on with JJK this week like the whole thing with Nabara and I'm not trying to spoil it but um L female lead whatever you would call her but i would say gege did make up for it with maki w female lead but yeah, even with the whole nabar thing i still wouldn't push shibuya to a seven or even an eight i think it's automatically like an 8.5 at the minimum because it's like the biggest arc in jjk history i mean even when the series ends which isn't it supposed to be maybe a year from now shibuya will still be the biggest arc maybe the final arc would be a little bit bigger but i think shibuya is like the peak but yeah, just because of that, the take's unfortunately unvalid personally to me. Because I know, you know, everyone got their different standards when it comes to rating arcs and stuff. So you can't be too judgmental. But my final opinion on this take is that even if you can tweak Shibuya to the maximum, and I mean the maximum, it's still an 8.5 at the least. So yeah, thanks for the subscriber take. And let me know in the comments what y'all would rate Shibuya and how y'all felt about the arc overall. Moving on, we got some Discord takes that I managed to gather around from JJK servers and whatnot. And I honestly feel like Discord is where everyone's gonna be completely real because like with Twitter and YouTube, you have to watch yourself a little bit because you're not trying to get race shared or plus L, Y, B better. But with these Discord takes, they really brought the heat. And also we're not gonna get into depth with them because they're pretty straightforward from what I can see. So to start off the Discord takes, we got one from Dr. Dream, you know, nice PFP by the way. But it says Gojo is one of the most iconic shonen characters in the past decade. You know, I was literally just discussing Gojo's and Jujutsu Kaisen popularity in general with a couple of my friends. And the thing is, no other anime and manga, or at least the ones I can think of, have gotten number one anime and manga with just like what, 160, 170 chapters in the manga in one anime season. And if we're being honest, Gojo carried that first anime season. But when it comes to Gojo being iconic, I definitely agree because if some people don't even know his name, he's just like, he's just that overpowered dude with the blindfold. And if I'm being honest, Gojo probably carries 30, maybe even like 40% of the JJK's fan base on his back. And probably some more with that blindfold because that blindfold and his design just screams iconic. But one thing that I will say is that yes, Gojo's iconic, but I would say that only pertains to new gen shonen only because series like Naruto, One Piece, you know, like Bleach, the big three, they will always be the most iconic. But yeah, valid take for the most part. Moving on, the next take says Megumi is better than Gojo. Wait, 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 wait. 
better than Gojo. And the funny thing is, I'm just noticing this. He has a whole Gojo PFP while saying this, but yeah, I replied to the dude when I was gathering takes, and I asked him if he meant character-wise, because he obviously could not have meant power-wise, and he continues to say, in every way. Okay, Megumi is like my second favorite character, and Gojo's like my first, you know, I'm not gonna get into it. And I don't care what anyone says, the Gojo past arc was one of the best backstories, yes, including those Naruto 10 out of 10 backstories. And that arc is mainly the reason I mess with Gojo as much as I do, just because I feel like that really showcased Gojo's true character. But yeah, anyway, negative 10 out of 10 take. Megumi's cool, don't get me wrong, but not over Gojo. And just wait till Gojo gets out the box. Next, we got one from... Um, yeah, I'm not even gonna try to pronounce that right now. But it says JJK got one of the best hand-to-hand -hand fights in new gen. Okay, um, yeah, it's already a valid take. Because out of all the new gen out right now, meaning Black Clover, MNJ, what is there, One Piece, and the others, JJK probably got the best fights, regardless of hand-to-hand. -hand. And if we only want to talk about hand-to-hand -hand only, because Gege is like a master with that stuff, if you think about it, JJK definitely number one with hand-to-hand, -hand, and just physical combat in general, because after what we got with Shibuya two years ago with the whole Yuji and Mahito fight, and still what we keep seeing from Yuji in the manga right now, it's a wrap when it comes to a discussion like this. But yeah, Gege is a master when it comes to drawing that stuff. Okay, so looks like we got another take from the same dude. But this time it says Itadori is currently the best shonen MC in Jump. Yeah, I don't know about that one. And has the most development and is the most interesting. Except for Denji because Denji is S tier like Itadori. Okay, if I'm being completely honest, Itadori is not S tier in my opinion actually. And sorry to say it, he's not the best shonen MC currently. Itadori in my opinion is like a very high A, you know, just like I rank Mahito as high A. Because I really just haven't felt that S tier vibe from either of them. And here's the thing, just because he's high A doesn't mean that he's not going to become S tier. You know, JDK only got like 170 chapters, so he still has some time to ascend to that rank in my opinion. And in the comments below, you guys can let me know how you would rate UG A, S, because there are times where I see a little bit of both in him. But when it comes to being the best MC, I will say Yuji did hit his peak in Shibuya and in that specific time period, there wasn't a doubt in my mind that Yuji was currently the best MC. But you know, he's cooled down a little bit with his calling games, you know, post Shibuya. I'm, I'm not gonna lie, I don't think he's too interesting now, but I will say Yuji does got the category when it comes to character development. Okay, okay, so we're down to our final take. <laughs> And it looks like it might be a bit of a controversial one based on how you feel about the Zenin clan. Anyway, it says hot take. Nayoa and the Zenin clan's death was deserved. Okay, bitch, you said it, that's me. I'm gonna be completely honest about this because I was actually tweeting about this the other day. While I don't really condone genocide or massacring a whole clan, it was honestly deserved because like the stuff they did to Maki, Mai, even Toji, and practically everyone they just joined because they weren't worthy maybe he wasn't massacred justifying it for being honest but honestly the disrespect especially from Nayoa had pissed me off at one point that I might have done the same but I will say that the Zenin clan massacre was pretty cool regardless both Maki and Nayoa absolutely snapped off in that fight and if I'm gonna miss anything from the Zenin clan it's gonna be them Zenin curse techniques because now that I'm remembering the arc, you had one dude like practically blow up the ground with like a thousand punches and another guy, well, okay, the punching technique was probably the coolest. But yeah, I don't wanna go on a whole binge. At the end of the day, the majority of the Zenin clan did deserve what happened to them. I think a lot of people could agree with me on that. So yeah, the last take of the vids, valid. And that is all for the take reactions in this video. It's my first video back. I really miss making content for y'all and just talking about anything anime, which is my passion. And I hope this is the start of a new grind, so run this video up. Thanks to everyone who stuck with me during the break because we actually grew a little bit, and thanks to everyone who watched this video. Go ahead and leave a like, subscribe for more videos because I'm honestly trying to do some more JDK content because, like I said earlier, it's one of the best new gen out there right now, but most importantly, I'm trying to see your JDK takes in the comments, so make sure to leave one even though it's mid. And, um, yeah. Told you he's better than your favorite anime character.